All right, so in this video, what I want to do is take a look at and look into some of the new features in After Effects 2023. Just came out a couple of days ago, but there are a few features that are gonna be very useful for 3D art artists, animators, um, anybody who renders things out of Cinema 4D and brings them into After Effects for compositing purposes. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so here is a list of all the new features, or at least the big ones. Really the biggest is probably track mat layers, which gives us a little bit more control over what layer we want to use as a track mat, rather than having to put that layer uh, on top. Okay, so there's definitely some advantages here. I will probably do a deeper dive video at some point with this, but for right now, um, this is the one I'm most excited about and that will have some of the biggest implications when it comes to compositing. Um, there's also native H.264 encoding, which may not seem like a big deal, but personally, it's gonna stop me from um, using media encoder quite a bit because I typically just render things out as H.264, especially um, if you know the quality doesn't need to be top notch. If it's just like a quick preview or something, this is gonna be sufficient and hopefully that will save me a bit of time. Some of the composition presets could be helpful. The animation stuff, the timeline navigation, um, you know, could be useful and definitely be things I experiment with here. The Cinema 4D optional installer um, really won't affect me since I will already have Cinema 4D installed, but it is something that could be useful for those people who don't use Cinema 4D a whole lot. Honestly, some of the things in beta are what I'm most excited about. Uh, the 3D model import looks very intriguing, you know, depending on how close it is to say something like Element 3D, what we can do with the lighting and materials, you know, that could be uh, something to keep an eye on. The properties panel, eh, maybe not so much, but also open color and ACES color management. Te technically, this is something you can still kind of do already, but it is a headache. You have to jump through lots of hoops in order to use Open Color IO and Aces. And Cinema 4D Redshift want to use this by default, so it's nice that we're gonna get something a little bit more streamlined in After Effects. And the second they do get that incorporated, um, I'll be using it and I'll definitely make a video about it. Now, I did want to kind of talk about and show a couple of those new features, namely um, the track mats and uh, the outputting H.264 directly inside of um, After Effects. So for puzzle mat or for track mats previously, what you would have to do, not that this is really gonna work, is put your black and white layer um, above whatever it is you wanted to cut out, okay? And then from the track mat option, you would choose the layer and you would only have that one layer to choose because it's directly above. Now you may be going, well, wait a second, that's the only layer in here. And that's true, but if I just dragged in say, um, a different layer that um, isn't really gonna do anything, you can see that I still have that option for any of my other layers. If I had a solid in here, okay, that will show up in my track mat um, choice, okay? If I had a shape layer, same thing. You can also pick whip. So if you wanna, what you can do is just pick whip which other, uh, whichever layer you want to use as a track map. And you may be going, well, okay, track map, why would you want that over, say, the puzzle mats? Well, puzzle mats are great, but because it's done with an effect, as opposed to using a track mat, it can be a bit problematic when you go and scale or rotate or do certain transforms on the original uh, layer, like the beauty pass. So that's where track mats um, can come in handy. And as of right now, this is the way I found to kind of utilize a, a puzzle mat as a track mat. And I'm gonna place it just at the very bottom because that's what I would typically do with uh, a workflow like this where I can choose any layer, put it at the bottom and then maybe even shy guy it once I'm done with it. Um, but what I will do on the puzzle mat is for right now, I still have to use an effect um, and I'm going to shift channels here, okay? And I'm gonna say, take the alpha from the blue, okay? But then um, turn off the red, okay? So that will get rid of the red. Would do the same thing if there was green in here. But if I look at this now, we can see the blue is what's left and everything else is alpha. And because of this, I can now use this as a track mat um, if I use the alpha track mat and not the luminance, which you might be used to using just the black and white values if you rendered out in object ID um, pass from other renderers. Um, honestly, I forget what it is in the standard and physical render. It's been so long. Um, but it's the same type of thing. So what I can do now, 
right, is turn on my beauty pass so we can kind of see everything. On my beauty pass, pick whip what layer I want to be my track mat, okay? And it honestly figured it out right away, okay? So I it went with alpha mat, but if you wanted to use a different type, you would just click on that icon and it'll switch to luma mat, which uses the black and white values, which is what I said you would typically use in um, other renderers, standard and physical, okay? Um, and then you can click on it again to use, um, oh, it goes back and forth. Now what I don't know, ah, invert. Okay, that's what I was looking for. That's how you invert. And so that is really, really awesome because now I can go ahead and shy guy these. If I can find my shy guy switch, it really would just be the puzzle mat, but um, shy guy them. Now I just have that single beauty pass to worry about. And awesome, you can actually still see it even though it's shy guide. So that is another advantage. Um, and then, yeah, I can go and I could do any of my transform scale, things like that. And it shouldn't affect the um, uh, other layer, um, the set map or the shift channels. Okay. So that was what I was really excited about to see. And I'm going to do some more experimenting. Um, but I, I do think track mats are something I will, I will go back to. And then the other thing was, let's just kind of duplicate this beauty and turn off the track mat okay, was outputting to H.264. So, you know, if you add something to um, the render queue, and I was already experimenting with this, um, you can switch the output module now to H.264, and you have your format options. Hardware encoding, great, that should be pretty quick. Something like this. Now, what it doesn't look like you have here, which uh, makes a lot of sense, is you don't get a lot of the presets you would have in something, say, media encoder. So, if you had a preset you were using a lot, um, you know, that still may be a reason to uh, use something like media encoder. And I absolutely would, you know, for other uh, reasons, okay? But for quick previews, H.264 is my go to. Um, and this will save me hopefully a little bit of time. But that will do it for this video. Let me know if there's any of the other features in After Effects uh, 2023 that you're excited about or that you would like me to make a video on. I'd be more than happy to do that. Um, also, if you, didn't find, if you did find this video helpful and learn something, please make sure to like and subscribe, maybe even leave a comment. Um, and if there's anything else you wanna see, let me know and take care.